Well, hello, and welcome to another Space Foundation Space Commerce Entrepreneurial Interview. I'm Shelley Brunswick, the Chief Operating Officer at Space Foundation. Today, I have the privilege of talking with Dr. Nicole Wagner. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Shelley. How are you? I'm doing great. It's nice to join you today. It's great to be here. Wonderful. Well, let me tell our audience about you because you have a fantastic uh, bio. So, Dr. Wagner obtained her PhD in molecular and cell biology from the University of Connecticut under the advising of Dr. Robert Burge. Nicole entered the graduate program in 2007 and spent the majority of her graduate career working on optimizing retinol containing proteins for applications in devices. During the course of her PhD research, she played a critical role in the proof of concept experiments which helped to found Lambda Vision in May 2009. Nicole is an accomplished scientist and entrepreneur with numerous peer-reviewed publications, presenting her research both nationally and internationally at meetings. Dr. Wagner is the recipient of numerous awards, including the Connecticut Technology Council's Women of Innovation, Collegian Innovation and Leadership Award, Connecticut Magazine's 40, uh, under 40 for the class of 2015, and the 2020 Women in Aerospace Achievement Award and, for 2020, and the Hartford Business Journal's Woman in Business Award for 2021. Nicole, I'm so honored you're joining us today. We look forward to learning more about you as well as Lambda Vision. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, first of all, let's talk about your company. Can you tell us more about Lambda Vision? Absolutely. So Lambda Vision is a startup company that was founded out of Yukon that is developing a protein-based artificial retina to restore vision to the millions of patients that are blinded by end-stage retinal degenerative diseases. So we're going to start by targeting the orphan indication of retinitis pigmentosa first and then follow on to the much larger market of age-related macular degeneration. So for those of you who don't really know much about those diseases, both of these diseases are diseases which affect the photoreceptor cells or the light sensing cells in your eye. So I'm hoping that everybody who's watching this, this segment is, has nice healthy retinas and your eyes are taking the light in the room and converting it into a signal that can be sent to the brain. Patients with those diseases, they lose those light sensing cells. And so what we do is we've created an artificial retina that will replace those function of those damaged rods and cone cells to restore high resolution vision. Um, so we've recently had a pre-IND meeting with the FDA, which gave us a lot of um, concurrent um, and a lot of uh, clarity on our non-clinical, our manufacturing and clinical study designs. And right now we're at the phase where we're just trying to work as fast as we can to get this into patients. That That is just incredible. and. Now, what I want to do is kind of bring in the space component today. Like, why are we talking with the Space Foundation? So, first of all, I want to understand more about what is microgravity and how does it benefit your company? Great. So, you know, what we've been doing is we've been, um, the way that we actually manufacture these artificial retinas is through this layer by layer deposition approach. So, essentially, what we do is we manufacture these. You can imagine almost like a big sewing machine where we're dipping a substrate into various different solutions. Now, gravity will affect the deposition process. So things like sedimentation in the solutions, homogeneity of the solutions, um, convection, evaporation, those can all affect the deposition process. So you may ask, why does a vision company uh, get involved in space. Um, it's actually a, a pretty cool story. We were part of Mass Challenge in 2016. And it's one of those situations where we were really in the right place at the right time. Um, somebody from Cases and Boeing, they were sponsors at the time of Mass Challenge. They came around, they knocked on one of the tables and said, you know, we're having a meeting right next door. You know, people who are interested can can participate. And so at that time, we sat down and we talked about what we were interested in, in terms of this layer by layer deposition process. And that's how this whole process um, and whole project really got started. So in, in discussing this with cases in Boeing, um, what we've discovered is that microgravity can improve this layer by layer deposition process because we remove issues like sedimentation and improve homogeneity in a microgravity environment. 
Um, one of the really cool parts of, of winning the Mass Challenge Cases Boeing Prize in 2016 was that we were partnered with an implementation partner, Space Tango. Um, and Space Tango was really an, an awesome to work with. Um, but what they did is they took over the parts that Lamb Division wasn't an expert in. Um, for us, it wasn't that we never envisioned doing work in microgravity, but there was a lot of question about how do you actually get to, to space? Um, so by working with them, it allowed us to focus really on what we're really great at in terms of looking at the artificial retina um, and analyzing the thin films. And Space Tango took a lot of, of the work in terms of how do we do this in microgravity. And so they did a lot of the automation and building of the apparatus. Um, for us, what was, you know, sort of kind of building on that is that, you know, once we won this prize, we flew on SpaceX 16 at the end of 2015 or 2018 rather, um, which was just a really, really cool experiment, experience and experiment. Um, for us, it was an opportunity to actually see something that we developed on Earth be launched in a rocket to the International Space Station. Uh, we actually had the opportunity to go to Kennedy Space Center um, and watch the launch. Um, so it was really just an incredible experience. That is really amazing. What I'd like to do is, uh, you know, your company is fantastic, but I really want to share with our audience, how did you get started with this company and this concept? How did you, what was your journey that got you here? So a little bit of serendipity here. Uh, you know, for me, it was a little bit of a non-traditional path. Um, I initially graduated high school and, you know, I really loved the sciences and math um, and, you know, took my first step into, into college by going to Florida State. And at that time, you know, I really wanted to be a physician. Um, fast forward, Florida State, after being there a year, really wasn't the perfect place for me. It was, I was homesick. I'm from New England. Um, so I came back closer to home. I went to UConn. And to be honest, the, the only reason I joined a research lab was to check an application, you know, check a box on a medical school application that I did research. Um, so I started with Dr. Burge, uh, and this time it was about 20 or 2004, 2003, 2004. Um, and, and really, you know, got to see what his lab was doing and what the research that he was conducting uh, was about. Um, and so Dr. Burge is really a pioneer in using light activated proteins for device applications. And so, you know, after being there for a year, I got more involved into the, with the research and decided that I was going to pursue a PhD, um, which was, you know, different than my initial medical school applications and, and target early on, but I think, you know, actually worked out for the best for me. So after joining his lab, an opportunity presented itself to start a company around using this light activated protein bacteria dopsin for uh, application in this artificial retina. And, you know, when I had the opportunity to take on this leadership role, I really ran with it. And so, you know, that really was the start to LAM Division and the start to my career and introduction into entrepreneurship. Amazing. It just highlights that you never know how your journey is going to go, but, you know, just always be prepared and then be open to new ideas and new opportunities as the door opens. So thank you for sharing that. Um, you shared earlier some of the partners that helped you along the way, but I wanted to learn more about the partners that helped you along the way and who were some of them and, and how were you able to find them and, and how did they help you position yourself for success? You know, there's there's certainly been no shortage of, of mentors, um, you know, academic faculty, business advisors that have helped us along the way. Um, but as it relates to a lot of the space work that we were doing, you know, as a vision company in space manufacturing, it really wasn't on our radar at first. And it really wasn't on our radar, not because we didn't think it was possible, but just because as a vision company, we didn't know how to get there. Um, and there's, you know, there's it's a lot of thinking about the experiments in a different way. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to talk a little bit more about that in, in some of the lessons that I've learned moving forward. But, you know, I think for us, we had the support of cases in Boeing, which was, you know, provided some financial support, but it also allowed us to be partnered with Space Tango. Um, and Space Tango, you know, is really a pioneer in, you know, building and, you know, these, these Tango labs 
on the International Space Station that help to automate experiments. And so through working with them, we were able to bring our, our vision really to fruition uh, and, and do the first experiment on the ISS. Um, you know, I think also beyond, you know, the relationship that we have with NASA and CASIS in terms of just funding, the other advantage in, in partnering with them is that they really, you know, as a small business, one of the things that people always say is, you know, it's always about the team and building out your team. And so by partnering with CASIS um, and Boeing for this initial study, it really allowed us to expand our team exponentially. I mean, we had access to some of the leading researchers in microfluidics, thermodynamics, uh, engineering, mechanical engineers, just a, a huge wealth of, of a team that it came, you know, that came to us um, just by through this project. Additionally, for, for those of you who are thinking about, you know, maybe doing something in microgravity, they have helped us, you know, also reach out to potential funders, um, other partners, industry partners. So that has been, you know, for us, great as an early startup company. Um, you know, I think as we we move forward, you know, I think it is not just NASA, CASIS, Boeing, but it's also the support from the state of Connecticut being part of an incubator program here. Um, working with the University of Connecticut has been phenomenal, um, as well as some of the other early government agencies that have supported us as well. So the National Science Foundation and the National Eye Institute have been incredibly supportive moving the company forward and helping us get some of that R&D support. Wow. So you've talked about a number of things that help entrepreneurs, finding the right team, finding partners, finding some seed money. Now you have talked about manufacturing. And so I want, would you tell us more about GMP and how it is different than manufacturing on earth? And why did you cho choose to pursue this form of manufacturing than traditional manufacturing methods? So GMP really stands for, for good manufacturing practices. So any company that is developing something that needs to be used in the body um, or clinically will need to you know, adhere to good manufacturing practices. And really what that means is that if you're going to be using this in the body, it needs to be something that is manufactured with consistency, control, as well as reproducibility. Um, and, you know, terrestrially or on Earth, there are a number of GMP facilities where you can go um, that have all of the regulatory guidelines and everything in place to be able to manufacture a product that will be eventually be used in humans. Um, so what we're doing is, is just that. I mean, we're going to adhere to all those same guidelines, but now we're starting to look at what that might look like if we do this in microgravity. So there's a bit of, um, you know, thinking about what, my, what GMP manufacturing looks like in microgravity as well as what some of those practices and policies are going to be um, and doing, you know, the research really with a, you know, a different quality standard um, and adhering to a standard that, that has, you know, a lot of documentation and, and processes and procedures in place. Um, so for us, you know, I don't think we're trying to reinvent the wheel here. I think what we're really looking at is, you know, how can we manufacture the best product that we can use um, to restore vision to these patients with macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa. And so regardless of where it's manufactured, we are, are working to implement those processes and procedures now. That's fantastic. Um, I love how we talk about, you know, microgravity environment, manufacturing in space. It's all, uh, you know, exciting technology. And, and like you said, we're using GMP, whether it's on earth or in space. So along this process, as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you had some challenges. Would you share some of your challenges that you've had? Um, what were some of your biggest challenges you've had? Well, there's certainly no shortage of, of challenges as an entrepreneur, um, as a researcher, as a scientist. Uh, you know, I think for us or for me personally, you know, one of the biggest challenges in starting up a company is was really, I, I would say, youth and an experience in the beginning. Um, you know, it's it's that you haven't done this before. Uh, and so, you know, you have to demonstrate to the people that you're pitching to or the government agencies that you're, you're trying to get some funding from that you have the right team in place. 
And so for me, you know, that was initially a challenge. Um, but, you know, since that time, we have we have significantly built out our team, an excellent board of directors. Um, and I've really been working with a number of business advisors as well to really help us overcome some of those challenges. You know, I think from a, a scientific perspective, the other challenge in, in doing this in microgravity is really thinking about the experiments slightly differently. So, you know, when you're doing something terrestrially, you can, you know, you go into the lab, you try it out, it might fail, no problem. The next day you set up the experiment and try a different parameter. Microgravity, um, you don't necessarily get as many shots on goal. Um, so there's certainly a lot of, of advanced planning that goes into these experiments before a launch. Um, things that, you you know, I wasn't thinking about before. So weight, you know, the way that we're doing this in a, in a terrestrial environment, this is really taking up a lot of landscape in the labs. You know, we had to miniaturize the device. We had to think about voltage requirements, um, temperature requirements, storage. All of those things, you know, I think as scientists you think about, but, you know, may not be the key drivers of your experiment, at least when you're doing this terrestrially. So that was certainly something that we've we've learned um, and have had to to change along the way. So for me, you know, I think that that plays into a lot of a lot of different things, whether it's technology glitches, whether it's, you know, getting your computer to work, whether it's your car doesn't work. You know, I think these are, are challenges that that everyone seems to face. And so it's really about becoming adaptable. Um, and I think, you know, those just being open to that and understanding that every day is going to be a little bit different um, really has helped me personally overcome a lot of those those challenges. That's wonderful, because, again, it's highlighting that you're going to everyone's facing challenges and you face them as an entrepreneur as well and a startup company. So amazing. Well, share with our audience some of your biggest successes. Successes, you know, I, I think it's always harder to talk about your successes, right? Um, but for me, you know, I think one of the biggest successes for me was graduating with my PhD. Um, you know, I it was a long journey to get, <laughs> get through a PhD. Um, but what I really liked about it is that I had the opportunity really to take a research project and really transform it into something that is now a, a company that's poised for growth and that is going, you know, that is developing a product that's going to help millions of people worldwide. Um, you know, so so seeing that whole process for me was 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 personally, you know, very gratifying um, and something that I, I, I got to get a lot of personal satisfaction from and I, I view as a huge success, um, you know, beyond the professional successes, you know, personally. I'm a mother, a wife, uh, you know, I've enjoyed being a role model for my kids. You know, my kids now, when they see a rocket launch, they say, mom, look at it, it's your rocket up there. <laughs> and so that's been a lot of fun in, in watching them and, and seeing how they, you know, love science and, and nature. And, you know, they, they take my business cards out and say that they're a business girl. Um, so, you know, watching them grow has been, you know, personally, you know, as well an, an accomplishment for me. Um, as well as, you know, building community of other entrepreneurs. I have been, you know, for me, I've been passionate about seeing, you know, helping other entrepreneurs. I have been very fortunate to be on the receiving end of a lot of mentorship um, and have had a great group of advisors. And so for me, if I have an opportunity to give back to other entrepreneurs, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to do it. And I find that very rewarding as well. I, I, I'm grateful for that. And that's part of why we have this uh, podcast series. And with that, are there some le uh, lessons learned that you'd like to share with the entrepreneurs that will be listening to this podcast? There are, there are so many lessons learned, right? Um, I was recently asked to be my high school commencement speaker this year. And so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, lessons learned for me. Um, and, you know, really, how did I go from you know, thinking about medical school, to being a researcher, to starting a vision company, to now being funded primarily by by NASA and doing microgravity work. And so, you know, I think the the one thing I would say to people is is just show up. You know, a lot about life and a lot of, you know, is is working hard, but it's a lot of serendipity. 
And so you never know who you're going to meet sitting on, you know, sitting next to on the bus or on an airplane. Uh, and so you just don't know what's going to be around the corner. And so for me, you know, I always tell people, you know, show up, work hard and, and, you know, you will, you'll achieve what you want because you, you just, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, you know, another thing that I always like to tell entrepreneurs, and this was a tough one for me too, um, but if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So being an entrepreneur can be incredibly intimidating. And, you know, as, as you're starting off, you certainly don't know everything. I can, you know, a, a funny story is, you know, I was talking to a VC when I was right out of graduate school. And a lot of this is, you know, learning the language, right? So I knew the language of science, but I didn't necessarily know the language of, of business. And so, you know, the very first question I get is, you know, is your product a 510K, a PMA, a BLA? And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm sitting there Googling what all of these words meant. Um, but simply ask, ask the question, learn, um, be open to, to finding out what you don't know. Um, and you know what, if you, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. Um, you know, I think sort of to, to, to round it out, the other part is, is just be open to pivoting. There are so many changes. Um, every day is, is different. Um, uh, you know, every every experiment is going to come with its own set of challenges and just be open to, to those challenges. That's great lessons learned for everyone watching today, not just entrepreneurs, but great life lessons for all of us. So thank you. you we did talk about some of the financing you receive and the startup funding. One of the questions, you know, people will want to ask is what makes this financially feasible, especially when you're looking at manufacturing in space? You know, I think this is an important, this is a really important question for anybody that's thinking about starting a business. I mean, there are so many great ideas that are out there and, you know, it's not just about having a really great idea, but it's, you know, about having a great market as well. And there has to be a huge unmet need. Um, so as we're thinking about doing this in microgravity, you know, a lot of the questions we get is, you know, is this, is this feasible? I mean, now if you, if you manufacture this in space, can you make money off of, of this? And so, you know, for us, uh, what I think is, is unique about our particular product and what makes it a great example and a potential use case for, for manufacturing and microgravity is that we are targeting um, the orphan indication of retinitis pigmentosa. So retinitis pigmentosa affects about 100,000 people in the United States, about 200,000 people if you can include Europe, and then over 1.5 million people globally. Um, but one of the benefits of working with an orphan disease is that you usually have small clinical trials. Um, you have a small, uh, usually a smaller preclinical trial as well. And then you also work very, very closely with the FDA, which is a huge advantage. Um, so for us, this gives us the opportunity to work with a smaller patient population. So we have a much smaller scale before we move to a larger market. Um, so we're not thinking about manufacturing, you know, hundreds of thousands of these on the first run to the ISS. Um, you know, we're talking about hundreds to a thousand. Um, and then the other advantage here in how we are manufacturing this is that we are, you know, some of the huge drivers of cost for manufacturing on board the ISS, you know, has to do with, you know, astronaut time, automation, um, how much, you know, how much weight and mass you're flying. And so the other advantage here is that this is a very, very small product um, and that the protein and everything that we're using is very, very stable. So for us, I think, you know, there is the economics are, are there behind the product. And, you know, I think it's a great opportunity to explore manufacturing and microgravity and also building out some of these GMP capabilities which can then be applied to many more other markets beyond the artificial retina um, and uh, you know, clinically to other applications as well. So a pioneer, you're a pioneer in many ways. So we talked about you know, partnership, we've talked about finance, defining your market, you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for success. But one of the areas we haven't spoken about, and I'd really like to understand your thoughts on the importance of advocacy and awareness. You know, I think for me, um, when I think of advocacy, I think of awareness. You know, I think for it's about it's about learning about what opportunities are there. I mean, and it's also about support. 
And so for me, you know, as I think about advocacy and awareness, I think, you know, especially as it's relating to a lot of the space based work, it's about letting people know that these markets exist, letting people know that your product can be manufactured in different places, um, you know, really being pioneering and at the forefront of a lot of this. Um, you know, I would encourage people that are listening to this podcast to to reach out to, to myself, um, other mentors, people who have done this before, because if, if, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And I think, you know, it really truly takes a village to, to move these products along. And it's not a one person thing. It's a consortium. It's a lot of different partners. Um, and by reaching out and, and, you know, just, just asking people and becoming aware of what the opportunities are, you, you know, you, you really opened up a new, a new market, a new opportunity for yourself. That's fantastic. And Nicole, we're so grateful you joined us today. Are there any parting words you want to share with our audience before we sign off? You know, I would just tell people to have fun. Um, you know, if you're not having fun, then it's it's time to move on. For me, that was one of the first bits of advice. You know, I knew when I was going to become a CEO um, and take over, you know, leading this company, that it was going to be hard. And, you know, my very first mentor said to me, you know, Nicole, have fun with it. This is not going to be easy. This is going to be challenging. Um, and if you're not having fun, you know, let us know and it's time to move on. So while that can be be challenging, uh, you know, I would tell everybody, you know, have fun with it. Take the opportunities, learn what you can um, and just, you know, have a certain openness to to exploring new new ideas and opportunities. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Nicole. This has been an amazing interview. We hope you'll join us again in the future. I would love to, I would love to join us join you again um, and be part of this. This is this has been wonderful talking with you. Wonderful. Well, if you're interested, our audience, if you're interested in learning more about our Space Commerce Entrepreneurship Program or watching more of our Space Commerce Entrepreneurial Series, you can go to our website at spacefoundation.org. And check us out and check out our Space Commerce series. I want to thank you for joining us again today, and we look forward to seeing you again. There's a place for everyone in the new global space ecosystem.